pandemic has made many people reevaluate their life choices. That includes careers. And this has created a reskilling boom where people are learning the skills to do an entirely different job. Tech writer and media consultant Mohit Rajans joins us to explain the tools that are available to those considering making the switch. Maybe you want to start making hair masks and serums. Mohit, I saw you were so interested in that last segment. I was definitely interested, but I think I've passed the hair the hair process of my career. I don't think I'm <laughs> going to be able to salvage a second career in that. But who knows? I did learn a lot from the segment. Uh, me too. Uh, let's walk through some of the trends that are associated with exploring some of these new careers. Well, it's interesting. Some of the stats that I was able to uncover for this column in particular and realizing that 25% of Canadians have mentioned that they're interested in exploring a new career, according to a recent poll. And out of a thousand people that were actually surveyed in that same poll, 75% said that they would be interested in looking at a career that fit their lifestyle a little bit more. So what we're seeing now is this ability to actually explore new careers in a whole new way. I'm somebody who spent a lot of time in continuing education and there was nothing worse than trying to skill up somebody or reskill somebody who was coming from a nine to five job and had to sit in a classroom in order to get a certificate or learn a new skill. Now we're in a situation where digital skill building is the way to go if you're looking to actually advance your career in a second or third phase. If you look at the online resources available, what's really clear, Anne-Marie, is that the transfer of skills will be needed in this workforce in order for us to really strive. And that's where leadership and experience start to become in demand. Think about how many people who don't really know what building a team is really like or how to really motivate a team because they work mostly in an online environment. That's where leadership and skill building becomes really good for the online, uh, and the online potential is there as well. But I do want to mention something. Just because you sign up for something, that means that you're interested in doing it, you still have to invest the time. And I think that that one but that's one thing that people forget, that while you might be interested in exploring other skills, you do have to spend the time to actually learn them. That's a really good point. Um, digital skills can mean a lot of things to a lot of people, especially if you've been in one job over the last, let's say, five to ten years. What are some of the digital skills you need now? I think one of the things that the hybrid working environment ended up exposing was just this gap and this digital divide in how many different types of skills that people come to work with. I think now what's very important is for people to go straight to their employers with how to bridge the digital divide internally at work. What skills are needed for people to stay competitive in their work environments and what are they being evaluated on so they know the skills that they actually have to go and move towards building. Mm -hmm. I think the other thing that's very important is that we're afraid to ask questions, unfortunately. We don't know why different departments, while we're working, are able to do things in different ways. Once we get a better understanding of the digital tools that are being used in our companies, we'll feel more comfortable about asking for the help that we might need to excel. So I think there are several things happening. We're seeing a divide amongst generations that are in workplaces. But I think now is a great time to go to employers and ask them to incentivize the learning process because these tools are readily available and better than ever to use. They're accessible, as you say, they're readily available and people have shown great interest in wanting to access them. What excites you most about watching this trend unfold? Well, I think time is still the commodity here, Anne-Marie. And when you look at the potential for people to make a difference in the community and really help newer organizations, think about that CFO that doesn't want to look at Excel corporate spreadsheets anymore. It can make a difference in a community organization. If you're somebody that's been a teacher your whole life and wants to start to write music and sell it, you can do that now by learning with your basic online tools. I think once you feel a little bit secure with having all your ducks in a row, put all of your files in one place, create an actual place where you can celebrate your accolades, you'll start to realize the difference you can make by just getting a little bit more confident in your skills. Well, hey, Rajan's always good to chat with you. Uh, have a good one. Have a good week. My pleasure, Emily. Take care. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here, or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.